Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Books and Brown Liquor. It's your girl, Tanya. This is my book review of White Horse by Erica T. Wer. Okay. I don't even know where to begin with this one. I actually found this book by accident. Like, uh, I don't know if I've shared this, but I've been trying to read a lot more books about Native Americans and like indigenous cultures, right? And I came across this book just accidentally, right? And our, I love this book so much. I went on Goodreads and the reviews were not that good. And I'm like, what? How? This book is so fucking dope. Okay, anyway, our main character, her name is Carrie. And she's an indigenous, <laughs> she's an indigenous woman. She is, uh, she is, in Colorado? The story takes place between Colorado and like Idaho Springs. So she's like from the, this area. Um, she's what she, she is what she refers to as a, an urban Indian, you know? So she didn't grow up on a reservation, so to speak. She grew up like in the city, right? So anyway, our character, her main difficulty is uh, she has a lot of anger and resentment towards her mother. Basically, her mother disappeared when she was only two days old. She is under the impression that her mother has abandoned her. Her mother has never been around. Because again, her mother disappeared when she was two days old. Okay? So she was raised alone. She was raised by her single father. And uh, once the mom left, the dad did have a drinking issue. So he is uh, left with brain damage from like a drunk a drunk driving, an accident, you know, from drunk driving or whatever. So she's basically left as like the caregiver for her dad. And then again, you know, she has this resentment because her mother is missing or her mother has abandoned her from the time that she was two days old. So <clears throat> one day she has a cousin who was like cleaning out, you know, some some old family stuff. And he comes across her, her cousin comes across a copper bracelet that once belonged to her mother. So her cousin is like, yo, this used to be your mom's. You should take this. So of course she's angry, resentful, bitter. I want nothing to do with that stupid ass bracelet. But much to her chagrin, she ends up in possession of this copper bracelet. This is an antique turn of the century copper bracelet. And it has carvings on it that have, um, uh, carvings that are related to like the Aztecs going back to like hundreds of years, going back to like Mexico, right? So this is like some ancient stuff. And copper, uh, once upon a time, natives used uh, copper to make jewelry because they believed that copper protected you from negative things. That's all I'm gonna say. So one day she actually like just messes around and touches the bracelet. Her skin actually touches the copper and she sees the ghost of her mother. Yeah. So she's like, okay, wait, am I high? Am I losing my mind? Or did I really just see what I think I saw? So whenever she touches this bracelet, she sees not only the ghost of her mother, but there is a dark entity that is with her. So this kind of makes her rethink everything thing. This makes her rethink everything. Did my mother abandon me or did something happen to her? And is that why she's been gone my entire life? So these events unfold this huge path this girl goes on. Basically it's a, it's a story of self-discovery, right? She has to learn more about her mother. She has to learn more about other family members whom she has never met. Okay, so she starts learning about things about her mother she never knew, things she never cared to know, the things she never cared to know because she thought her mother was a deadbeat that just took off and never came back. But again, after seeing her mother's ghost repeatedly, she has all these unanswered questions. Was I wrong to, to think that my mother abandoned me? Uh, that's all I want to say without going too much into it because the way the story unfolds, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed 
the journey this girl went on learning more about her family, the family that her mother comes from, which she has never met. She's never met her mother's side of the family. So she discovers like all this stuff she never knew, right? And then I love the fact that uh, the book also incorporates a lot of indigenous history, culture, mythological creatures without getting too much into it. So this story was well written. You know, I, I enjoy this. Um, our main character, she's gone through a lot of suffering. So it's made her very tough. It's made her very gritty. She don't take nobody's shit, okay? She's that girl. And you know what else I love? Oh my gosh. Our main character is a huge Stephen King fan, okay? And so, uh, like I said, part of the story takes place in Colorado. And as you know, The Shining was inspired by the Overlook Hotel in Colorado, although, what is it? The Overlook Hotel. And also, um, she references that book. It also references her like visiting that location. So I thought that was a cool throwback. And of course her name is Carrie, duh, the book Carrie, right? So I love the fact that Stephen King is referenced in this book and also The Shining is referenced in this book. So if you're a Stephen King fan, that's a big deal. So that was dope too. Shout out, I was like, oh shit. So obviously this author is a Stephen King fan. So I love the fact that that was incorporated. Um, it also mentions how like, Stephen King has this thing with like Native American culture, you know, Pet Cemetery, Indian, the Indian burial ground that like turns out. So they reference like all this stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, this book for me was a five. I love this book. I love the storytelling. I love the plot twist. And I love, um, it's kind of a mystery. Her figuring out like what really happened, that's kind of a mystery. So when you get to the end of the book, you, all of your questions are answered. I love a book with a resolution. Okay, so that was cool. I love the main character. You know, I love a tough girl. I love a tough girl who don't take no shit. So that's a five too. Um, so all in all, I enjoyed this book. I recommend it. If you love reading books about indigenous cultures and people. And uh, yeah, if you, if you enjoy that, this is definitely a good book. I think this book is underrated. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this book. So I'm talking about it. I need y'all to know. White Horse by Erica T. Worth. I recommend it. And that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you good reading. Bye.